Watch out! Apollo Justice Ace Attorney is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB content rating system due to it featuring mild blood, suggestive themes, and violent references? Whatever those are. Oh well. Viewer discretion is advised for this Let's Play series. Hey there, Roddy! I'm Marty. This isn't turn bad, Trump. What are we talking about? <laughs> Anyhow. I think we can get through this testimony in this video. Let's do it, let's do it. Only ever person with that and it was the defendant in that studio that night. But that doesn't prove Vera poisoned it! How many times have we heard that one, Air Forehead? The poison reached its victim via that coffee mug. And from where did that coffee come, hmm? Not to beat a dead horse again and again, but perhaps you could fill us in? I'm on it! You need a horse to beat? I'm your man! <laughs> oh, gosh. It was Vera who poured the coffee. She admitted that as herself. And you witnessed her pouring the coffee? Of course I didn't witness it when she came in with that tray. The coffee was already poured and a steam. Let us not forget the defendant has admitted to po pouring the coffee herself. She didn't admit to poisoning it, she just admitted to pouring it. <laughs> I yeah. heard her statement was, I poured, I served, and I killed. What? What? <laughs> oh, that last part was just a little joke. I don't think I'm going to get anywhere with this coffee mug. I need to find another weak spot in this case. The only thing that touched Drew's lips during the interview was that mug. You're sure about that? Well, to be really, really precise, I was busy gobbling mint candies the whole time. One of those candies might have been poison! Yet, at the time of the autopsy, no fresh fragrance of mint filled the room. And no mint residue was found. It was a long shot anyway. Don't tell me you're still trying to prove this. You think the victim ate, drank, or otherwise ingested something other than coffee? Hmm... Well, Mr. Justice, if you have some proof... The possibility is there, I can feel it. Just maybe not prove it, not yet. And possibility isn't going to cut it, not now. Mr. Misham ingested that poison via a route other than the coffee. I can prove it, not yet. Not yet. It... can't be proven. I do believe our little forehead is growing up. Pity, we like the rash, youthful forehead best. <sighs> Another hole in this case that needs plugging before I can prove anything. But first things first, I'd better uncover a weak spot before I try to strike again. On with the cross-examination. Nothing left the studio after he died. Except me. <laughs> Not one thing? You're sure? Well, that's probably yep. the statement. <laughs> sure as sure can be. Sweating. Well, with one exception. One exception? What? Journalist Spark Brushel does interview Leave Studio, end quote. I actually forgot he said that. <laughs> Ah, uh, <laughs> come on! It's a joke, uh, get it? Not funny, I know, but still. Did something leave the studio that night? Why does that sound familiar? Where have I heard something like that before? Now that we've proven our witness is a comedian of sorts... I know why. What? The coffee cup's gone. No, it wasn't. There's two coffee cups, and one of them was in there, and the other one we haven't I thought found. the other was on the table. No. I'm pretty sure one. it was on the table. The other one was knocked on the floor. So. One was on the floor, one was on the table, I think. Oh, my... I'd like to turn to our defense attorney before returning to the testimony. Do you have any idea what, if anything, might have left the studio that night? Not a thing. Everybody I, I know try, says they I need just one, one thing. thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think one thing might very well have left the studio that night, actually. A certain something that has vanished from the crime scene. By which you mean... Something other than our witness? Of course. Don't tell me, Vera Mission. Believe me, any comic relief I may provide is entirely unintentional. Then let's see what you've got for us, Mr. Justice. Well, this thing wasn't at the scene of the crime, so I can't show it to you. But I do have evidence that shows how it could have been taken from the scene. Oh, okay, this is going to be difficult. Vera had her business card, she just hired somebody no. to do it. <laughs> I find Prosecutor Gavin more amusing than this guy, really. If that was comic relief, why do I not feel amused? We want evidence, not entertainment, Mr. Justice. There goes my career in stand-up! <laughs> <laughs> well, this thing wasn't at the scene of the crime. <laughs> okay, well... So we got attorney's badge. We didn't see the... Uh, it's the mailbox. Take that! This is the only link between that studio and the outside world. A letterbox? What did Mr. Brushel just tell us? When he entered the studio on the night of the murder, the victim had just finished writing a letter. 
Yeah, I said that. And yeah, it was true. Furthermore, you went on to tell us that he put the letter in a yellow envelope and put it in the letterbox. Ah, oh, but that very same letterbox was empty. In other words, that night the yellow envelope disappeared. Ah, yes, intriguing. So an envelope has disappeared from the scene of the crime. Of course, this changes nothing. Huh? He has a point, Mr. Justice. Gee. What we're trying to figure out here is how the poison got into Mr. Misham. Is it really important that this envelope the witness says he saw disappeared? Well, if it did disappear, then something did leave that studio that night. That seems very important to me. Very well then, the witness will add this to his testimony. You got it. I still think this fails to change anything, Air Forehead. I wouldn't be so sure. A letter disappeared from the crime scene that night. This is exactly the opening I've been looking for. A letter was put in the post from the studio, but I hardly think that matters. Uh huh. Nothing could be more serious than an envelope disappearing from that studio. And you were hiding that fact from us! Uh, yes, well, actually. I don't argue the possibility that a letter disappeared from the studio. But Air Forehead, isn't it a much more serious question for us? Right, how Mr. Mission was poisoned, I know. But Mr. Brushell's testimony has changed, which means the facts of the case have too. But what he's told us means something entirely different now, I'm starting to think. Let's keep thinking, Apollo. Clearly the only one who could have poisoned him was his daughter. You say clearly as though it were obvious. But this claim that the defendant poisoned the victim is merely conjecture. Ah, uh, yes, uh... Were we uh, pain? <laughs> well, you see... This is all uh, baseless conjecture! <laughs> in my business, it's all about making the most ridiculous things sound right. A bad habit, I know. Mm-hmm. Yes, well, uh, actually, uh, I guess this is more of a case of a ridiculous journalist sounds wrong, end quote. The court is forced to agree with you. Please refrain from wild conjecture. Understood auto clear! If only I could believe that. What do you think, Apollo? Everything he says seems so... not blood. Well, that's kind of what you want from a testimony, really. I need to keep my eye on what matters. How and why was Drew Misham killed? Vera poured the, poured the coffee, that's not going to change. But if that coffee didn't kill him, I need to find out what did and prove it. It's that statement. Wait, oh, there's... Yes, oh one? my gosh. What? It might be, yeah. Check his... No, uh... You sure about that? No, no not we, that. We I do mean... have to press this, though. Uh, I was gobbling mint candies. <laughs> I just love Junior Mints. <laughs> junior Mints are good, though. Junior Mints are alright. You remember that year? Christmas yes. That you got so many of them. <laughs> that was funny. I can prove it. I can prove it. it. Proof is possible. Here goes nothing. You do understand what we need, ya. Yeah. Proof, air forehead, not possibilities. Of course. And Prosecutor Gavin, I hope you understand. I'm ready to give you that proof. Wh what did you say? I have proof of the disappearing envelope. I saw him writing a letter. I did. Which was picked up by the mailman, I presume. Of course, which means... That envelope had a stamp on it. A stamp? Uh... As we all know, stamps come with dried glue on the back. In order to use the glue, you have to wet it by licking the stamp! Oh my gosh! You don't have to wet a stamp? Most no, some you do. I haven't ever used one of them. We get the peel apart ones because yeah, we we're, peel in, we're in America and not we're, America! <laughs> we're pretty lazy, that's why. Feh. No one worth talking to with this dead actually licks stamps in this day yeah, and age. Yeah, see? He agrees with me. Even if you wanted to talk to him, you couldn't. He's dead after all. Okay, so he licked the stamp. But wait, how does that explain the atroquinine on the rim of the coffee mug? If he licked the back of a poison stamp, the poison would get on his tongue, yes? What would then happen if he put the coffee mug to his mouth, hmm? Those traces on the mug weren't the killer's doing, it was the other way around. What? The coffee mug didn't poison Mr. Misham. Mr. Misham poisoned the coffee mug himself! Wow, we didn't even have to present anything. Order, order, order! But, but that doesn't... Does it? Recall, if you would, 
Astral Quinine is a slow-acting poison, yes. The poison entered his body when he put the stamp on that envelope. But his time wasn't up until the very moment he touched his lips to that cup of joe. You have something to add, Mr. Brushel? Uh-oh, his nose is picking up another scent. As I believe I mentioned, uh, earlier. Well, that's the thing, see. After he put his letter in the envelope, Mr. Misham sat there searching his desk drawer for something. A stamp! Yes, a so-called postage stamp, end quote. But you know, I don't seem to remember him ever finding one. Maybe he'd just run out? Incidentally, we searched that desk drawer at the scene of the crime. There were no stamps. Not a single one. Hmm, that does pose a problem. How will you prove that the stamp was coated with poison? Actually, I'm glad no other stamps were found. It makes proving the stamp he used was poison possible! <laughs> good show, good show. We, you can't even prove there was a stamp at the scene in the first place. Well, let's hear what the defense has to say anyway. Where's your evidence that proves the existence of this poison stamp? Uh, is it the frame? That has the... That has the poison. Indeed. It's also really tiny. That could work. He licked the blowfish penny! <laughs> <laughs> well, I, Prosecutor Gavin. I know blowfish kill you, but like... I think our beloved attorney has been licking too many stamps in his free time. The blowfish is like, it's a poisonous blowfish, so when you lick it, it's poisonous. It's it's a new type of art. <laughs> uh. Uh, do you smile like that when you torture all your victims? Or just me. Take care we don't lick you and stick you in the letterbox, Mr. Justice. Like Flat Stanley. Sure. <laughs> I think this I'm making this out to be way more complicated than it actually is. That stamp would have left a small atroquinine residue on something, but what? Oh, it was on the outside? Well, that certainly is a cute little frame. And by little, I mean really little. It was on the victim's desk, Your Honor. Quite empty, as you can see for yourself. I noticed that too during my inspection. So what? Ah, apparently you weren't as observant as you should have been. You see, when you saw this frame, it was missing something quite important. Missing something? Yes, a pale bluish stain on the inside of the frame. Atroquinine residue! What? Why wasn't I told about this?! <laughs> the frame is only two inches square. The face of the frame is even smaller. Maybe an inch wide at most. You aren't sane! Oh, but I am. Tell me, what fits in such a small frame? A commemorative stamp, perhaps? Man, that's a stupid design, though. Oh, it can fit one stamp. <laughs> Specially made. Order, order, order! The poison stamp was in this frame? Impossible. P Prosecutor Gavin? Why would he put something like that on his desk? Don't tell me he had it there so he could commit suicide if the mood struck. You know, can I say something? I had a thought, see? What, Mr. Brushel? And please stop jittering around like that. The victim was a forger, right? There's a lot of money in that line of work. Forger forges friends, makes enemies too, end quote. So the poison stamp might have been a murder weapon aimed at him. Oh, yeah. Oh, Rich. That's Rich. Leave the ridiculous flights of fancy to the Gavineer's song lyrics, please. Finally, something we agree on. The stamp was a murder weapon. Nonsense. Murder is a simple business. Why? Who would go to such lengths? No one. Oh, I disagree. C come again? Recall, if you would, the victim's reclusive lifestyle. Drew Misham hid from the world. He avoided meetings. His only contact with the outside world was the mail. The the mail? And technically Vera, if she leaves. Yeah. Now, if you wanted to kill someone who you couldn't meet but you knew red letters, a stamp would be the perfect weapon! Ridiculous! Where's your proof? I want proof. Show us evidence that this poison stamp was sent to him as a murder weapon. I might not have evidence, per se, but things are finally starting to come together. W what is Apollo? Your fists are trembling. I think I know what happened. I don't believe it, but I can see it. I think I know how Mr. Mission was killed. Well, fill us in, Mr. Justice. 
A certain piece of evidence points to the truth, Your Honor. I can show you someone with the intent to kill sent Mr. Mission the stamp of death. It was me, of course. I'm not sure it's entirely clear to me what this proves, Mr. Justice. Huh? Was I wrong? I believe we've shown probable intent to kill. Except the killer would be Air Judge and the victim you. Yeah! Consider that a warning, Mr. Justice. Think before presenting next time. Ouch. Yes, Your Honor. Let's pick this one over again. Okay, we have tickets. <laughs> tickets to the, the magic show! <laughs> Five got, bucks a piece! We've got the envelope. Oh, but that was from Mr. Wright. Yeah. Uh, we've got Vera's card. We've got the red envelope. We've got... I got the baseball card! Be with the pass. Was this <laughs> <is> the <laughs> evaporator my golf clubs? <laughs> Can we even play golf? Um... Ah, Perry the Black. You know what would be hilarious if if it was if like the autopsy report was what ends up killing somebody. Someone got killed by their own autopsy. <laughs> no, somebody else's autopsy report. <laughs> or something. That would be so. <laughs> the killer is like one of the forensics teams who makes the autopsy. They make the autopsy for the person that killed them with the autopsy report, and the autopsy report perfectly reflects how the autopsy report killed them. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's like, it's like the equivalent of the mafia putting someone's initials on the bullet that kills them. Yeah. Um. Well, I mean. I've deposited the hundred thousand yep. dollars in the designated account. Please send a receipt once you've confirmed the transfer. Sign the papers and send the enclosed envelope with the enclosed stamp within uh, three days. I need not remind you to mention this to no one. Well, it's probably that thing. Send the stamp. Isn't this the envelope? The one from seven years ago? Think about the text of the letter again. There were two pages in the envelope. This is page one. And this is page two. I want to draw your attention to one phrase in particular. Send in the enclosed envelope with the enclosed stamp within three days. The enclosed stamp, your honor. Ah! Oh, in other words, if I have this straight... The stamp, poison, on the stamp, lick, lick, gasp, end quote. Now, what if he had done exactly as the letter asked? He would sign the document, <laughs> put it in an envelope, and put the stamp on it, right? Then he would put it in his, his letter box. Fifteen minutes wouldn't have elapsed between affixing the stamp and mailing the letter. But the clock started ticking, and when the time came, he drew his last breath. And the murder weapon would be taken away from the scene. Quite conveniently, thanks to the postal system. As long as it wasn't on a Sunday. Man, he does this a lot in this case. I yeah, no that. kidding. Such a splendid imagination you have, Air Forehead. Let me confirm one thing with you, if I might. So, this poison stamp was inside the envelope from seven years ago. Yeah. Is that what you have us believe? Really? What? Well... well it is a little bit of a stretch, but th there's a possibility. Yes, a very small possibility. How small, I wonder. Um... <laughs> a poison stamp in this envelope? A stamp that then became the murder weapon? How do you intend to prove this seeming co coincidence? Well... Back! It was seven years ago and we don't even know who sent that letter! And your answer is silence. I see. Very well. I move to... It's not nice to pick on the Fräulein, Clavier. Oh my god. What are you doing here? Uh, Emma? <laughs> what was he doing? Well, like my Christoph Gavin impression? Did I sound like him? Don't quit your day job. Don't you have a crime scene to be looking after, Fräulein Detective? Someone had to come dig you all out of the mess you've been making of this case. Mess? You know, none of this would have happened if you just trusted it in science a little more. You can find out if that stamp was in the envelope. Easy. Care to explain yourself, Fräulein Detective? I'm imagining, like, Emma just, like, in the audience, like, this bull, and, like, just <laughs> running up, like, wait! <laughs> Learn me all you want. Science is on my side. It's that, all be, in the residue, right? That would be a great meme. Glare me all you want. Science <laughs> is on, on my, my side. side. <laughs> <laughs> when people say that the Earth is flat. <laughs> Glare me all you want. That's Science. a great... Yeah, we need to make them do a meme. It's all in the residue. You make custom thumbnails, right? <laughs> I never take any screenshots from the game used as the thumbnails. Oh, ever. okay. Well, I don't want any spoilers. Okay. I'll just do, like, me as Apollo, you as Trucy, probably. And oh, just boy. like, Apollo, just this, number one. Oh, 
Oh boy. That's right. The poison detection spray. Produce the red envelope at once. You can open it with on the authority of the court. Spray it. Spray. Oh, look. Well, would you look at that? No mistaking it. That's atraquinine residue. I love Emma's pose up there. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't believe it. A murder weapon from the past? Now, seven years later, it bears its fangs at last. That was a poem. Absolutely outrageous. Tell me why. Why didn't this murder take place seven years ago? We'll tell you, Mr. Stewart. <laughs> well, um... There's one possibility. Maybe Mr. Misham figured it out. Figured what out? He realized that the person who sent the letter wanted him dead. So, he sent his reply with a different stamp. He must have done, like... Um, isn't there that service, service you can get where it's like, oh yeah, someone will like buy groceries and bring them to you and then you pay for them and you don't have to leave Oh yeah, oh, uh, what is it? Shipped? Shipped, yeah. Shipped. He must do that. <laughs> he must do that. Or or he's like, Vera, go to the store for me. I need more Cheetos. <laughs> Vera does not leave the house. She doesn't leave the house? No. Vera, call somebody on the phone and get and order me some Cheetos. Vera doesn't talk. <laughs> she, she talks when she's comfortable with people. I guess. You sign it with a different stamp and you put the decisive evidence in a frame. Back, you're still here? Brushel shoves her Can I make a statement here on the record? I, Spark Razor Tooth Brushel, claim this scoop as mine. Drew Misham killed in cold blood by sender of seven year old letter, end quote. Hmm, no, maybe something more succinct. Star falls after seven year delay, end quote. Music. Love the director hottie music. Nah. <laughs> order, order, order. I see no room for further argument here. Though I admit, this is all coming as quite a shock. To think that the murder weapon reached his mouth after seven years. Stamp his ticket straight to afterlife, end quote. Uh-oh. I think the witness is a bad influence on our judge. I see no room for further debate on this matter. The sender of that letter seven years ago could hardly have been our defendant. A Apollo! I think we just won! Very well, this court finds the defendant. Come on! Guitar solo! Shut up! Shut up. Is this the bright future of our legal system? Jury decides, not you, your honor. <laughs> Prosecutor Gavin? A ticket to the afterlife from seven years ago? Tickets for Gavinier's shows are invalid after two weeks. But, but it doesn't make sense any other way. It boggles my mind that so many people haven't noticed this. There's a fatal contradiction in Air Forehead's claim. A c contradiction? A poison stamp was placed in this envelope seven years ago. Whereupon it was framed until now. If that's the case, then why would Drew Misham have done what he did? Uh, Emma, explain that! He must have realized it was poison! Therein lies the rub. Seven years ago, the forger Drew Misham sensed the trap and put the silk damp in a frame. I do not debate this. But this begs the question. Why, seven years later, did he use that stamp on the night of the murder? Uh, whoops, ran out of stamps. <laughs> well, this one's probably fine. Oh, shoot! <laughs> <laughs> forgot! Really uh, surely you don't mean to suggest that Mr. Misham simply forgot? Yes. He put the murder weapon in a frame on his desk for seven years. Maybe. And forgot. Maybe he's like the, um, okay, who was the artist that painted with his mouth and then he, like, that went was, crazy? Uh, Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Maybe similarly with his art, he like painted so much and he's just like, eh, I forgot, it's fine. Honestly, I bet that's what happened. You expect us to believe he's spraying the trap on himself? It happens. Um. He always looks like a turtle whenever he. <laughs> <his face>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man, cramp in my neck when I did that face. <laughs> oh, be careful. <laughs> While I admit this is all quite shocking myself, it does seem highly unlikely that he would fall afoul of a trap that had been sitting on his desk for seven years. Uh, Apollo. I don't think we're winning anymore. Oh, I'm glad to see we're all back in the real world now. Welcome back to reality. We've been waiting for you. Okay, then how do you explain the poison stamp that was in this envelope? The poison stamp? Where exactly is this poison stamp again? Have you brought it to court for us? Um... I see no proof that such a thing ever existed. What about the atroconine residue, huh? 
Oh, I agree, that does seem to be atroconine residue. But Air Forehead, it's certainly no stamp. Also, he could have just spilled his Mountain Dew Baja Blast on it instead. Wow. <laughs> yeah, but who drinks <laughs> Mountain Dew Baja Blast? <laughs> Everyone's gonna think that we go to Taco Bell all the time. When in reality- Taco Bell is like one of my least favorite fast we food We both places. kind of hate it. They're cinnamon twister good. I have a friend though who really likes Baja Blast. <laughs> So, <laughs> even if your precious poison stamp did exist, Drew Misham never would have used it. That is all. Well, good for you. Urgh. They're like, man, this calls for another investigation. I believe we've come to a conclusion. Again. Uh, Apollo, were we wrong the whole time? I, I can't believe it! The poison traces match up! It can't be a coincidence! I'd like to bring some closure to this issue sometime this year. Mr. Justice? Yes, Your Honor? Let's review the facts and see where we stand. Seven years ago, Drew Misham received a red envelope. There were traces of the poison atroquinide on the document inside that envelope. A similar trace was also found at the crime scene. On this tiny picture frame, the defense has indicated the possibility of a yellow envelope. An envelope that left it at the scene of the crime with the poison stamp on it. Yes, but even if this envelope contained a poison stamp, and Drew Misham, knowing this, put it in a frame, he never would have used that stamp. I'm afraid you're right, which means there is a fatal flaw in the defense's case. I haven't been on the wrong track this whole time, I'm sure of it. The traces of atroconine, the envelope, the frame, and Drew Misham's mysterious death, they're all connected somehow. Well, Mr. Justice, do you have a conclusion for us? The defense stands by its case, Your Honor. We've seen that the logical outcome of the evidence makes no sense. Which means that one of our clues must be a fake. Ah, a fake clue? Fascinating. And if we find this fake, your wild fantasies will prove quite reasonable, ya. Yeah. The fake clue that's thrown us off the poisonous trail is none other than the red envelope of the frame, Drew Misham. <laughs> well, it's obviously not that one. <laughs> Why not? He's not a fake person. I mean, he's a fake I am a robot. He is a forger. <laughs> That's why he's so good at forging. He has the precision of a robot. That's also why he doesn't leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> That's also why his daughter's so quiet. She's a robot, too. She's not a Luke, robot. Luke, my boy, clearly robot, everybody's robots a robot. Robots don't give birth to robots. She's not, also... she's not like a biological child. Oh, maybe not. They're both, they were both made. But think... Mr. Stewart! <laughs> I think the thing that's throwing us off is the red envelope, maybe. This red envelope is a fake? Uh, who went live on Twitch? Proton John went live on Twitch. <laughs> Proton John? Yep. Without a doubt, Your Honor. Objection! Wasn't it you who presented this evidence to the court? Oh. <laughs> Hold on a second, Apollo. The poison on that envelope, the frame, and the coffee mug, they're all connected somehow. Oh, right. <sighs> I can hear it already. It looks like the fake was you, Air Forehead. Now's no time to... Bleah. Now's no time for wallowing in self-pity. Let's get thinking, Apollo. The fake code that's for... Oh, no penalty. Cool. No penalty. Penalty number 12. Oh my gosh. Is it really true? This frame is the fake clue? Without a doubt, Your Honor. Oh my gosh. Wasn't it you who presented this evidence to the court? Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Go back then. <laughs> no, come on, it's new dial. No! C hold on a second, Apollo. The poison on the envelope, the frame, and the coffee mug. They're all connected somehow. Oh, right. Wait, <laughs> it looks like the fake was you in a full head. <laughs> we can flog ourselves later, Apollo. Like, now it's time for thinking. Why would it be him? The, the victim was a fake clue? I'm afraid I don't understand. I'll explain. We have an envelope, a frame, and a mug linked by poison. That all makes sense. What doesn't make sense is the victim himself. Objective. Congratulations, you've completely lost me. So the fake evidence is none other than the master of fake himself, the forger? It makes a good story, I'll give you that. Mm. The fake clue. Fakes forgeries. Ah! I know that face. That's the I just had an idea face. I don't know if I'm right, but I'm going with it anyway. What if our forger is the fake? Come again. Seven years ago, our forger sniffed a trap and stepped aside. Seven years passed. Now the forger stumbles into that very same trap and dies. Why? That's what I want to know. Because the forger who was killed 
was a fake. Here we are again. The victim was a fake. One forger smelled the trap. One forger fell into the trap. That's two forgers, and one of them was a fake. Order, order, order! So you're telling us that Drew Misham, the victim, was a fake? Well, if he was the fake, who was the real forger? You better not be claiming there was some kind of switcheroo. I'm afraid you're going to have to back up your story. Mr. Justice, show us just who the real Drew Misham was. If Drew Misham wasn't the real forger, there's only one other person it could have been. Understood, Your Honor. Forger Drew Misham was himself a forgery. The real forger was... I Valley Grammar! No! <laughs> Attorney makes wild claim become subject of mass ridicule, end quote. <laughs> Better come up with something quick before the story goes to print. <laughs> A forger- Oh, no penalty. Wow. There could only be one explanation, really. The real identity of the forger known as Drew Misham is none other than his only daughter, Vera Misham. Order, order, order. Mr. Justice, this is going out on a limb even for you. I kind of agree. I mean, Vera, a forger? Let's consider it before you write it off entirely. If you look at the paintings in the studio, one fact becomes quite clear. Forgery had been taking place in that studio for quite some time. The forger wasn't caught in that trap seven years ago. This can only mean that the one who was caught in the trap wasn't the forger. Well, actually that does make a certain kind of sense. Also, she's very much an art girl. Yep. One more thing, only two sets of fingerprints were found in the Forger's studio. Drew Mishams and Vera Mishams. Also, here's the pun. Vera drew my sham. Why? What? Drew Misham, Vera Misham. The pun on them is Vera yeah, drew my sham. I don't sham. know. My sham, fake. Oh, I did not know my sham was meant fake. It's like, it's not your sham, it's, it's my, my sham. sham. I'm a sham! <laughs> I'm a sham! <laughs> Forgot about that. If we know that Drew Misham wasn't the forger, that leaves only one possibility pr process of elimination. The forger was Vera Misham. Well... Stop playing the air guitar and let us actually, like, do stuff. Fascinating! Vera Misham? You've been paying attention to the trial so far? Let's just ask her and be done with it, shall we? Who are you? Who is the forger Drew Misham? Was that an expression of emotion I saw <laughs> in her face? She's staring holes into Prosecutor Gavin's face. I'm used to being stared at by Fräuleins, believe me. Though they usually talk to me too. Oh, come on! We- Every popular person has that one fan who, like, just stares and can't speak. Come yeah, on. yeah! Tell us, were you the one who forged those works of art? Yes. So... So the forger Drew Misham was... you? What? What? Oh, I love her outfit. Her outfit's great. Holy cow. The court was in an uproar and it wasn't coming down. We had to break for a 10 minute recess. What? I wanted it to be break for investigation. Never. That would have been a short trial period for the last case. If we immediately went to another investigation. It would basically have to be a free investigation. That's true, because we took 30 minutes for one testimony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, that's it for today, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Tune in next time. More trial? Question mark? Yeah. 10 minute More recess. More trial. 10 minutes to calm down. So what's what are your thoughts on the case so far? Uh, um, it's not like any of the other fourth cases. Correct. Which is kind of cool to see something different. Um... 
Come on. I think it's it could a, be. I think someone it could died be, without but, being shot, stabbed, or blunt force trauma to the I head. It is great. I love that <laughs> aspect. I wish. I, I mean, this is my own personal opinion. I wish there was more females I could voice. I feel. Like I agree. Be, I felt bad. It was like Trucy. Oh, everyone's here. Yes, for two, two se- seconds. Ten seconds yeah. right there. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Next, I think Vera is going to talk a little more next episode. Uh, by a little more, you mean like two words. Ten lines. <laughs> <laughs> you missed it. Ferb already had three lines today. today. <laughs> Anyhow, look forward to next episode. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day and God bless.